Hey guys, what's up? So in continuation of the last video on the push press, today we're going to be talking about the push shirt. And we're going to be talking about two things in specific about the push shirt, and that's the dip position and the receiving position. So in the dip position, we're going to split it up into two. It's going to be the elbow position, the front rack, and then the lower body positions when you're actually dipping. And then in the receiving position, we're just going to talk about the shoulder lockout and also the lower body positions in which you receive it. Elbow positions. So if the elbows are placed a little too low, what happens is the bar actually starts to slide off the shoulder. And this is counterproductive to what we want because as we dip and drive up, if the bar is not going up with us, there's little to no power transfer. On the other end of the spectrum, if the elbows are high, most people start to compensate by slipping their hands off the bar into the fingers or start to arch their back, both of which also cause a loss of power and disconnectivity. What you want is actually to hold that bar with a full grip and with a decent elbow position that allows you to keep the bar on your shoulders while you dip and drive up. So now with the lower body, a common mistake that I see is that people always push the knees forward and the hips go straight down under them. And the problem with this is that the anterior muscles like the quads get loaded with all the load leaving out big muscle groups like the glutes and the hamstrings that can produce a lot of power. On the opposite end, if you sit back too much into the movement, you're loading your back, your glutes and your hamstrings without using the quads, also leaving out a big muscle group that can produce a lot of power. Also with this position, what happens is the bar tends to fall forward in front of you. So what you want to do is actually load your anterior muscles like your quads and your posterior muscles like your back, glutes and hamstrings equally while maintaining your center of gravity right over your midfoot. This gives you the most stability and power. Now moving back up, we're going to talk about the shoulder positions when receiving the bar. Looking at my palms, as you go up, you don't want to be turning your palms into you, externally rotating those shoulders. Instead, you want to be turning your palms away from you, internally rotating your shoulders. But as you do this, you do not want to excessively shrug your shoulders up, but instead keeping those shoulders down and internally rotated. So just to show the application of the shoulder position when receiving the bar, so when my shoulders are externally rotated, the bar actually can't get behind me. But as you can see, in the second rep, when I internally rotate my shoulders, I get a lot more range of motion, and this gives me a very good lockout position. Now that you've seen all the positions, let's try each one out and see what happens. So the first position I'm going to show you is low elbows. And what happens with low elbows, like I said before, is as you dip, the weight of the bar actually pushes you down. So as you can see, the bar actually slides off my shoulder and causes a loss of power when I drive it up. In the second position, I'm going to show you high elbows where my fingers actually slide off the bar. It's hard to see here with lighter weights, but as you go heavy, the effort and time taken for me to wrap my hands around the bar will make a difference. The third position that I'm going to show you is the knees forward. So as I dip, I dip with the knees forward and I drive up and I receive in the knees forward position as well and what happens is that because I'm pushing my body forward the bar ends up behind me and this actually causes me to lose balance. Lastly, I'm going to show you what happens when I sit back too much in the dip position and also in the receiving position. Now as I sit back, what happens is the bar center of gravity is in front of me and it tends to fall in front of me and as I drive the bar up, because I'm also receiving in that sit back position, my shoulders can't get over my head and is in front of me and this causes me to chase the bar forward. So those are just a few common mistakes that people do make when it comes to elbow positioning and also lower body positioning for the push jerk. And let's just see what happens when you do a push jerk when the center of gravity of the bar is in line with your center of gravity and you're putting your body into the right positions to maximize power. So while doing this, the body should feel pretty balanced. You shouldn't be fighting it forwards or backwards. The power delivery should be focused upwards and there shouldn't be any excessive forward or backward jump. So I hope you found these training tips helpful. If you do like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section below. Subscribe here, check out my other video here. And as always guys, train hard and move well.